Things are not what they used to be. That's the favorite saying of any generation still mystified by times long forgotten. Come to think of it, there really hasn't been a time in history where man was happy with the present long enough to even appreciate it. We romanticize the past, we dread our present, we fear the future. Yet each particular time, anyone, whether they've lived through the age of the Roman Empire, the Renaissance, the Middle Ages, or even today, each present time was never the perfect time for those living in it. And that particular present then became some other future's perfect ideal dream age. So there's a certainty that even back during the caveman days, at one point, one caveman said to the other, you know, back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, that must have been fun. Why couldn't we have been around back then? Now that's quite a concept. It says a great deal about our psyche. Whoever came up with our DNA must have been asleep when the definition of happiness or gratitude was being given out. Because the shorter end of the stick of happiness is what we're mentally stuck in. And the bare idea of happiness, well, that's changed through time for most of history. Thirty years ago, any human being would have felt happy just to survive, just to see the birth of any new day. Every age brings about a new conflict, which if traced back, goes back to the beginning of time itself. Still, sheer happiness, and the idea of it, remains a mystery. Why can't we all remember our youth, what it was like to be a child? That kind of happiness seems like a memory of a memory, of something we kind of recall, a time we'd like to have back, but can't, because time takes our experiences, and memories are all we're left with. Well, those memories were every single little thing the world had to offer, because everything was new. Maybe as adults we forget that some time ago the world did feel new. And now as we grow older, we are old. The world feels old, it feels worn down, bored. The excitement of it slows down. We have to remind ourselves what happiness is like. But are we happier today, all of us, living now, in this age? Is this age the best there is? The best it's ever going to be? Because the measure of this age's success is defined purely through technological advances. And have we as humans grown with it? Or is technology the only thing that is advancing and not us? Yes, we've managed to extend life and cure viruses and diseases that evaporated thousands a century ago. But the more years we borrow, are we happier living them? Is quantity overshadowing quality? Man's desire to extend life never thought about extending the quality of life. A hundred years ago, a man was happy if he lived just to see his old age as few ever did. Today, we read self-help books. We watch TV shows that teach us how to feel happy. There's an entire culture dedicated to teaching us, the supposed lucky ones, how to stay happy, how to be happy, as though there's some magical map that will show us the way. Thousands of years of evolution, from caves to skyscrapers, from riding horses to flying airplanes, the very reason why we're here eludes us. Like the beautiful butterfly we're desperately trying to capture, knowing we never will, we're still at square one when it comes to the most elementary reason why we are who we are. The greatest machine we'll ever create is us. And yet we advance the mechanics of life while sabotaging the spirituality of life. A machine can't think, it can't feel, it can't love, it can't reason, it can't feel pain, it can't be sad or happy. Yet after all this time, we enter into an age now where we have to teach one another how to be more human. We seek security, yet the most insecure, the most impermanent thing around us is us. In any moment our lives can be ripped away from us, the one thing we ignore until mortality knocks on our door is what happens when we answer that door. Do we remember how the world felt? The first moment we embraced it? The last moment we felt it? Will we remember the loves of our life? Or the hate? 
the hate that always finds a way to steal us away from love's delicate taste. Because when people on their deathbeds were asked about the regrets from their days on this planet, this is what they said. I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. I wish I didn't work so hard. I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. I wish I'd stayed in touch with my friends. I wish that I had let myself be happier. So when was the last time we lived our lives without these regrets? Or a life where experiences overwhelm these regrets? A life we want to remember and not a life we long to forget? And wouldn't we all love to be the words of Frank Sinatra's My Way? But how many are living a life that is a symphony and not just some hum lost in time and space? This new age, our age, our dreaded present, these cell phones, the internet, the social networks, created to help us become closer. There's never been a time in history where people have felt more alienated from each other than now. We stare at the blinding light of our phones, forgetting to look around at the world, at each other. When was the last time your eyes met another's? just for the sake of having an original human encounter. When was the last time you felt more comfortable talking to a person rather than texting them? When was the last time you wrote a note, a letter by hand? Behind this virtual wall, we keep away the best of what we once were. We walk around with headphones to mute out the world. We take photos we never develop. We grow a desire for a life lived publicly and not privately, as anything that's public is deemed important. Anything that's not might as well be dead. So we cater to this exterior, this, this facade of life, this religion of a new age, this flawless outside, and project this vision of happiness, despite growing cold and distant on the inside, so it's no surprise people turn to self-medication to warm the iciness surrounding this kind of life. It's as though we've become an observer of a life and not an active spiritual participant in it. And religion, which perpetually keeps us from jumping off the roof, our spiritual guide, whatever the religion is, even this, in this new age, has remained the tool used to divide us, conquering any reason to justify hate. If religions were given to us to make us strive for a deeper spiritual meaning to our lives, as a metaphorical justification for anything that happens to us, then the number of people who would have jumped off a roof due to the lack of any religion versus the number of people killed because there is religion would have to be a number so lopsided we'd have to wonder what in the world are we believing in? And who is to blame? The so-called God we've never seen or heard from, or is it us? This collective guilt of every man and woman in history, because after all, he sent us his son. What did we do? We killed him, and now we worship him. But who knew that this path in worship was through murder, was through crucifixion? And have we not perfected that practice? We choose who governs us. We choose who teaches us our happiness. We've managed to create an emoticon for every imaginable form of happiness, except the one within us. For in this age, where does a man find himself? How does he find peace? Is religion enough? Is it enough for anyone living in this time, in the battle between the material and the spiritual, the scientific and the alternative? Who is right? What is right? How does a person know where to turn? To whom to turn? How? The mystery of Brazzo perhaps allows us to go back to the beginning, the beginning of time, our time, on this planet. A simpler time, a time when life was lived without the materialistic, when man coexisted with nature, and all nature gave us was enough to live free and to live well. His name is Josip Gerbovac, but he is simply known as Brazzo, which translated from Croatian means little brother. 
That name, given to him by his best friend and mentor, Ivisa, was a man who would shape Ratzel's life more than anyone else. To ime mu je dao Prokić putem neba. Došao jedno veće kući i rekao je da on za sav narod se zove Braco, a Viktor i ja, odnosno muž i ja, da ga možemo zvati Josip njegovim imenom. I Prokić je rekao da prije sat vremena dobio poziv iz neba da je on braco, a da mu je on od zgora kum. Braco was born November 23, 1967 in Zagreb, Croatia. Crno sam rodila, kao da je crnic. Imao je crnu dugu, dugu kosicu, plave oči. Jako lijep. He was the only child of a well-to-do family. His father ran a successful business that gave Brasso and his family the financial security so desired in today's money-hungry society. Yet from an early age, Brasso looked to nature when wanting to find peace and tranquility. He spent hours surrounded by nature, by himself. It was the one place that gave him a sense of purpose and peace. Dobar je bio student i u to vrijeme je vrlo često odlazio u Maksimir. Uzeo bi knjige, tamo bi učio kod trećeg jezera. Svaki dan bi bio u Maksimiru. Imao jednu svoju crtu. Njegova crta je u stvari bila samo odmjerenost. Išli smo mi po tim diskačima, lovili komade, bili na brodovima, simo tamo, ali on je uvijek imao tu jednu dozu odmjerenosti. Jednom prilikom meni on veli idemo na otvoreno prvenstvo u disco plesu, a tada je to bilo dosta bitno zato što sama scena je bila drugačija. Mi smo kao momci morali smo nešto i pokazati na tom plesnom podiju. On je osvojio treće mjesto u disco plesu. <laughs> to je bilo čudo. Braco received a master's degree in economics at the age of 24 from the University of Zagreb. Soon thereafter, he follows in his father's footsteps, launching his own business venture. The business quickly becomes a success. But as successful as it becomes, Brazzo finds little satisfaction in the so-called security of the materialistic, and his desire to seek the spiritual meaning of life grows furthermore. There's a saying that simply states, we don't choose life, life chooses us. And the next chapter of Brazzo's life perhaps best describes that. In 1993, Brazzo is 26. His mother begins to suffer from painful, long-lasting migraines that conventional medicine cannot cure. She looks elsewhere in search of anything that would ease her pain. After exhausting every avenue, somehow she stumbles upon a man, Ivisi Prokic, who, as fortune would have it, eventually cures her migraines. Unbeknownst to both Brazzo and his mother, this one happenstance meeting with Ivica alters Brazzo's path for life. Ivica znao često u grupama pričati sa ljudima. Znao je ponekad reći da očekuje jednog mladića koji će doći kod njega kada tada i da će imati negdje svojih 26 godina i kada on dođe da će se mnogo toga promijeniti. Prokić je djelovao kao da ga je čekao i već je dosta stvari znao o njemu. A Josip je bio malo iznenađen, budući da ga je već u knjizi upoznao na slici, tako da nije dugo iznenađenje trajalo i odmah smo stupili u razgovor. Postavio mu je nekoliko pitanja, da li on magistar ekonomskih znanosti, ima 26 godina, sve je o njemu na neki način znao. Svako pitanje je bilo odgovoreno. Taj dan kad sam ga ja tu dovela, je da sam čekala navičaj da dođem iz posla i da ga pitam kako je bilo. 
Samo mi je ramenima to napravio i rekao dobro. Iznenađen je bio. Da bi treći dan u srijedu rekao, mama reći ću tebi i tati sutra, u četvrtak. Jer četvrtak je bio za njih poseban dan. I za Prokića, i za Josipa, i dan danas je. To je Josipov neradni dan. I tada je rekao mužu i meni, tata, mama, ja neću više raditi ovaj posao, ja idem kod gospodina Prokića. Kada je Braco došao, naravno, nisam znao da se radi upravo o njemu, jel? Ali kako je vrijeme odmicalo iz mjeseca u mjesec, gospodin Ivica mu je davao sve više i više pažnje mu je posvećivao, sve svobodno vrijeme je posvećivao braci, provodio s njim vrijeme, razgovarali su. I po tome se moglo zaključiti da na neki način je gospodin Ivica kod njega osjetio to nešto što je na neki način dao nama do znanja kroz svoju priču, kad je govorio da čeka tog mladića, mogli smo spoznati da je to upravo u bracu. Ivici Prokić, at the time he met Braco, was already known. He was highly respected within the alternative circles in Croatia and abroad. He helped people through his prophetic use of bioenergy, aiding them and guiding them with whatever help they needed. Živio je da bi pomagao ljudima. To je bio njegov životni cilj. Jednostavno divimo se jer je imao obitelj, znači ženu, djecu, ali prvenstveno su mu bili glavni ljudi koji su dolazili kod njega i obraćali su mu se za pomoć. As soon as Ivica met Braco, he knew. Braco had something special, something extraordinary within him, that Braco himself didn't know he possessed. Their friendship, a kind of brotherhood, began immediately after that, and as a sign of their bond, Ivica gives Brazo the name everyone will know him by thereafter, calling him Brazo, little brother. And as only time could tell, little did Brazo know, he was about to embark on a journey taking him further into the realm of spirituality than he ever imagined it would, carrying on a mission begun by Ivica. In 1995, only two years following their first encounter, Ivica unexpectedly and suddenly dies, leaving Brazzo an immense void to fill. U Afriku smo išli s jednim velikim veseljem. Bilo je dosta ljudi, gospodin Ivica je naravno i tamo ljudima pokušao pružiti pomoć. Išli smo se kupati na jedno određeno mjesto koje se zvalo Santa Lucia. Vrijeme je bilo toplo i gospodin Ivica je odmah rekao idemo se kupati, a ovi kod ostali dođu neka dođu. Despite being a terrific swimmer, after getting struck by a large wave, Ivica drowns. Izvukli smo ga iz mora, mada je bilo teško radi valova. Došla je policija, Liječnici ustanovili su smrt. Brazzo has never spoken about this tragedy. Although when remembering the events from that terrible day, Brazzo always mentions the night before the accident, Ivisa spoke about what would ultimately happen to him in the future. Brazzo, of course, could never have guessed that Ivisa would predict his own fate. Prokić je uvijek meni govorio mi smo ti jedan duh u dva tijela. Rastavio ih je samo morski val. Jednoga je vukao u more, a drugoga je izbacio na površinu. Countless people flocked to Braco's side, telling him he must continue on Ivica's good work. Braco decides to do so and dedicates his life to selflessly helping all those in need, using the gift recognized in him by Ivica.
I was all my life a fully committed skeptic. Um, if I couldn't feel, touch or see something, I, I didn't believe in it. And my mother at that time had full dementia and a broken pelvis. And we really just gave her a few days to live. It was she 92 years old and in very bad and painful condition. When I was asked to come to a lunch with Brazzo, I got some text messages, please come, please come, from our mutual friend. I told him of my mother's condition and he said, Peter, do you think that she wants to live? I said, absolutely, she does. So Brazzo said, come to my session, which I did. She broke her pelvis on a Monday. I met him for lunch on the Friday. I went to his session on the Sunday. And on the Wednesday, I got a text from her carer at that time saying, Peter, um, your mother just walked 50 meters, no pain. Now, my mother hadn't walked 50 meters for some years, and with a broken pelvis, the degree of pain is so extreme, and trying to understand walking 50 meters with no pain was an enormous shock for me. And then the carer's daughter took a photograph of my mother talking to me uh, on the mobile and she looked a hundred percent full color in her face energy smile it was a different woman to the woman who i took a photograph of on the sunday she never had pain from that break again i spoke to orthopedic specialists and they said this is absolutely not possible. Razzo's gaze. It's called just that, a simple gaze, no more, no less. It's not easy or simple trying to describe something as easy and simple as a mere gaze, but there are countless witnesses who account for its power. We can't see, we can't touch love. We feel it inside us just as we can't see God, but we know he exists inside us. This gaze is an example. Is something that can't be seen or held. It doesn't exist in the physical world, but in the infinite one, the one inside our hearts, held deep within the belief that there's more to a single life to us than what we aspire to in this physical world. As soon as I saw the video, I started feeling energy, which was surprising to me, right? And so when he came on stage, I felt tingling in my hands. I felt tremendous energy coming in. Very, very strong. I was, I was surprised how strong I felt the energy. He's very strong. And I couldn't even focus onto his face. His face kept disappearing and my eyesight was going bad. And a very strange thing happened, which I've never seen. There would be a face that was floating off and flying into the air. And I saw this 10 times. I've never seen it before. With Brazzo, 10 times I checked it. It was this face flying off like at an angle like right, right above him. And it happened all the time. I was spent a lot of time doing this, a lot of time, maybe two, three minutes. The rest of the time I felt tremendous energy. And I was very impressed because it's very strong. It was going to my heart. It was coming out of my hands, my heart. My hand shockers were warm, lots of vibration. 
and I felt like I had to breathe and sort of mm, like like put strength into my feet because there was energy and I looked and there was a woman shaking that's what I felt like if I didn't ground myself a bit better with my feet I would have been like falling very strong energy and very very beautiful very very pure and humble I have seen Brazzo live uh, in the gazing on three separate occasions in Australia, uh, in Zagreb, and now in Amsterdam. And each time was uh, different, but there was always uh, a shift in how I felt. And I feel a build up of emotion. Embrasso's connection to the groups visiting him have become legendary. Those who have witnessed it know the uniqueness it possesses, and it's best not described, but felt, as the best things in life are as such. Many have called it a new beginning, a birth of a defining sense of purpose for their lives, for themselves, and in many instances for those near them, following their encounter with Brazzo's gaze, people mention feeling an inner peace in their heart, a feeling of love, security, an elusive spark of real happiness. Others have witnessed their life, their health and career steer itself in a much more positive direction. But the power of the gaze remains with them, even after the encounter is completed. Često puta sam spominjao u mojim nastupima da je najveća vrijednost i najveća snaga koja se tu događa vjerovanje ljudi u bracu. I onda se čovjek sjeti onoga one riječi Isusove, ne ja, nego tvoja vjera te je izliječila. Ljudi, braci, vjeruju. E sada je pitanje kako su oni dobili tu vjeru prema njemu. E, tu vjeru su dobili upravo zahvaljujući bracinoj ličnosti. Najprije sam nastup bracinje, braco gleda i braco šuti. Ja sam nazvao taj njegov način pristupa budnom tišinom. Mnogi e, mudri ljudi su rekli da se najpametnije riječi mogu reći šutnjom. Karizma je nešto što je back to the Greeks, back to... It is a quality that you have that... Uh, how can I put it? That you shine. Karizma is a plus, is something that adds, but karizma is something that is unique. I thought a lot about what I'd like help with in my life and I wrote a very long list of things that I'd like to change for the better. Um, not so much physical things, but um, more spiritual things, emotional. When I met Bratz's gaze for the first time, all these things that were just swirling in my mind, my, my intellect was trying to figure out how I would gain new things, my mind just stopped. All of a sudden, I was in this silence of Brazzo's gaze, and I felt something filling me. I mean, I could physically feel something taking place in my body, and I felt like pieces of myself that I had lost along the road of life were simply brought back to me. I felt a new sense of wholeness, a sense of strength that I had really been missing before, where I felt I could accomplish things at a level that would make a difference. So it gave me a new sense of purpose. Ključni element pri liječenju stav čovjeka, optimističan stav, da ima neki oslonac, da ima, a vjera je jedan od tih oslonaca, i da to pomaže. U prostoru se Ya no lo alcanza a llover, se desdibujó. Ya no podía percibir sus facciones. 
solo era esta energía eh, tan hipnótica y tan amorosa. Sí, mucho amor. No me dio tristeza, pero él de repente me cambió. Él, empecé a ver otra cara y lo vi casi como la cara de Jesús. Esto fue, este fenómeno fue estudiado por científicos de todo el mundo, ¿no? Y han esbozado diversas teorías y explicaciones, sobre todo buscando qué es lo que sucede después de que Braxton mira a la audiencia. Es decir, cuáles son las transformaciones, qué sucede después. ¿no? Y estas eh, exposiciones que pues, se han incluido profesionales de la salud de todo tipo, científicos, médicos, etc. Y todos coinciden en apuntar que sin duda alguna este hombre tiene un don extraordinario. Pero eso nunca habla o toca a nadie durante el encuentro. Él nunca hace una diagnosis o provee tratamiento para alguien que está buscando tratamiento. Su gaze es su gift al mundo. Los que lo aceptan sienten la energía y el poder released por él. Brazzo never asks or demands financial compensation. What anyone chooses to leave as a gift for him does so out of their own free will. If there is a symbol which best describes Brazzo's gaze, it is the sun, the eternal symbol of life without which all life as we know it would not be possible, a beacon of endless energy and light. But the sun is something Brazzo dreamt about, and dreamt he could actually put in a physical form to remind all those who have witnessed his gaze the very dire importance of our sun. That's why he created a sun symbol pendant. Even the room where Brazzo's gaze is encountered is adorned with a symbol of the sun, specifically made for that room. I had a stroke uh, last year on October and doctor said that I won't be able to speak for the rest of my life. I want to walk a live streaming of browser keys and because of his case, I'm talking now. I came because I had terrible sciatica and it was getting so bad that I couldn't sleep. And then I saw Brazzo, only live streamed. And from that night forward, I've been able to sleep all through the night. I can roll on both sides. I got my mobility back and the pain is gone. Brazzo's gaze has seen him visit numerous countries from as distant as Australia to the US, Japan, Russia, Bali, almost every country in Europe. His popularity over the last 20 years has grown rapidly. There are not enough days in the year to satisfy the requests for Brazzo's gazing sessions. At the United Nations community event in New York, Brazzo was awarded the Peace Pole Award. And the year 2006 saw a record number of people witness his gaze at the World Congress of Paranormal Sciences in Switzerland. Can your pain and your problems disappear with a simple stare? The media has also taken notice of Brazzo and his gaze. There have been countless news reports about the mystery and phenomena of Brazzo, all unanimous with praise in regards to the power of his gaze. No, I was not disappointed. I think it was easier. It hurt my head, it hurt my head. It was very painful. I was getting ready. I had wrote my obituary and said goodbye to my children. And so, I tore it up last night. And you're walking around today for the first time without using a wheelchair in a while? Yeah, this, yesterday was the first day. Yeah, and that's because of the energy I got from this young man. One week after our Los Angeles event, I got this text. Great news. I just spoke with Michelle Kearney 
and she received the MRI report. Her brain tumor had shrunk more than 80%. <laughs> the doctors are totally amazed. Michelle attributes the miracle to Brazo. Testimonies which continually come in speak the truth about their encounter with Brazo, how he has altered or changed their life. His gift has been welcomed by every culture and religion, as the purpose of Brazo's gaze is the betterment of each person's life, their health, their spiritual well-being, and their unique place in the world. Sigurno postoji ta neverbalna komunikacija uh, između ljudi koja ide preko tih elektromagnetskih polja. Moguće je da netko ima puno jača ta elektromagnetska polja. Poznato je da je Tesla imao. Njegov prijatelj Mark Twain da je dolazio često u Teslin laboratori jer je imao nekih zdravstvenih smetnji i kad je bio u Teslin laboratoriju gdje mu su te smetnje prolazile. This ability to connect with nature, with the sun, with all life and this boundless energy surrounding us is what continuously drives Brazzo. His selfless goal in life is that all those who seek a higher purpose to the mundane find his peace that he himself lives by. And with this encounter, there is no higher goal than just helping others. A man like Brazzo, I think he's absolutely necessary at this time on the planet. That we need somebody to remind us of our humanity, to help us to come back in sync with nature and to value nature because we're a part of we're a part of this. In Brazzo's spare time, he most enjoys spending time with his wife and their young son. As family to Brazzo is the foundation he holds most dear to his heart. Love, family, friendship, peace, tranquility. Those are the words Brazzo finds holy, and all those who know him can attest to it. His boundless energy and his childlike interest in the world, which never falters, is always present. The excitement this world gives Brazzo is something he hopes all will live by. Brazzo has always been a lover of all that is natural. He loves walking along the coast and through woods. He loves early morning walks in the empty cities he visits. He loves to read, especially Paulo Coelho. He often imagines his favorite writer would read to him the very ending of The Alchemist, a novel he particularly loves. It is true. Life is really generous to those who pursue the personal legend, the boy thought. Then he remembered that he had to get to Tarifa so he could give one-tenth of his treasure to the gypsy woman as he had promised. Those gypsies are really smart, he thought. Maybe it was because they moved around so much. The wind began to blow again. It was the Levante, the wind that came from Africa. It didn't bring with it the smell of the desert, not the threat of the Moorish invasion. Instead, it brought the scent of a perfume he knew well, and the touch of a kiss, a kiss that came from far away slowly slowly until it rested on his lips. The boy smiled. It was the first time that she had done that. I'm coming, Fatima, he said. Brazzo's birthday is a special day for all those whom Brazzo has helped. On that day, at a center in Zagreb, several thousands of people flocked from all over the world, carrying a simple bouquet of flowers as their personal thank you for all Brazzo 
has done for them. Um, the doctors have been treating me for cancer for about 25 years now. The cancer started in the salivary gland and they took out a bunch and they radiated the breast. And I might be the first person to be able to say that Brazzo gave me saliva back. <laughs> it's, um, they also um, took out about half of my lung. lungs, so I'm down to about 50%. The first time I saw him about a year and a half, two years ago, um, my oxygen levels went up and I don't need oxygen to sleep anymore. Haven't needed oxygen a year and a half. So perhaps things in life are not what they used to be, and maybe that in itself is not such a bad thing, for now at least. If we took the best this age has to offer and combine it with the elements of an age we long forgot existed, we don't have to dread the present or romanticize the past or fear the future. Our present can be our best age, whatever time we're living in, if we choose what to take from it. Choices are bountiful, and today more so than ever before. And perhaps that's the reason man has never been more confused. Ja mislim da je problem u tome što je čovječanstvo znanstveno, tehnološki strahovito napredovalo. A ljudski mozak, ljudska osjećajnost, ljudski strahovi su isti kao i prije dvije i pol tisuće godina za vrijeme Platona i Aristotela. Znate, mi u ono duhovnom pogledu nismo baš jako puno napredovali u zadnjih dvije tisuće godina. I zato je jako potrebno da se ovom, ovoj humanističkoj strani ljudskog bića da velika pažnja. Yeats' poem, The Second Coming, captures in many ways what's going on today. And that is, it embodies a crisis in leadership and the uh, complete um, uh, lack of consideration for the average citizen. What he said is that things fall apart, the center cannot hold, uh, the best lack all convictions and the worst and the, are full of passionate intensity. And what you've got is a situation where there's a total failure of leadership. A leader has to be able not only to say these are the needs, but also give a sense of the ideals that can unite a society together in terms of values. The fundamental problem with leadership is that more and more you need a leader who can handle crisis. And the easy way to handle crisis is to move in the direction of uh, extremism. In other words, the leader has to say, I can handle this crisis by being very strong, by being authoritarian. And we need a firm, we need resolve, we have to do these things with power, and that becomes the ideal. That's the first thing. But the second thing, which in some respects is even more dangerous, and that is that a, a leader has to have an enemy. I will protect you from the enemy. And then what you have is a leader not simply saying, this is what I am, but to vilify the other. There's a lot of noise in this world. There's too much noise. There's not enough music for us to listen to. So if each life presents a chance to create our own unique melody, to prove there's a reason, there's a purpose to this existence, despite the noise trying to drown out the beauty we could create, if life chooses us, then all those who have witnessed Brazzo's gaze, this one silent, non-verbal moment, then we choose to see the beauty of simplicity, the beauty in the sound of silence, when all is quiet, when the heart is open, when miracles occur. We have a task to actually rehabilitate the fundamental teachings of all these religions in a way to say to these religions, you have tremendous power, you have billions of people following you. How can we work together as religious individuals for the good, for the good of all, for the good of humanity? See, in the past, it was always, I'm right and you're wrong. If my religion is true, your religion is wrong. That won't work anymore. Now we have to say, how can we say we're all right on certain levels and so that our people will feel that there's a greater, there almost has to be a kind of a universal invisible church a kind of a universal uh, religious person who says my religion is a religion that embodies love, 
that does away with hatred. Rats is a unique force in this world. Something chose him to be this in this life for the people, to help them to better their lives, to help us to come together more as a species and to advance our world spiritually, to uh, emotionally, psychologically, not just technologically. Braco je kroz svoj život izgradio sebe da je ušao u svoju dubinu, da je našao smisao života, da je našao ljepotu svoga rada, da je osjetio uopće zašto postojimo, da postojimo zato da bismo bili sretni. Sreća je zapravo smisao života zato jer je sreća sklad. Ako sam ja u skladu, onda i cijeli svemir je u skladu, ja onda skupa s njime zajedno radim nešto što se zove svemirski sklad. I kada mi osjetimo da mi u tome sudjelujemo, a to se sve dogodi u susretu sa bracom, ljudi onda osjećaju tu svoju snagu, tu svoju ljepotu, ljudi osjećaju smisao života, ljudi zato često dolaze, dobivaju snagu da promijene se u raspoloženju, ali i da se promijene u zdravlju i to čak ne mora biti nikakvo čudo. Jer ako postoji psihosomatika, da mi zbog uzrujavanja i stresa dobijemo neku bolest, mi sa dobrim raspoloženjem na isti način tu bolest i sebe istjeramo. Morat će se malo više pažnje posvetiti razvoju cjelovite ličnosti. Pitanje vjerovanja, pitanje vjere, to će isto dobiti neke nove dimenzije, možda mnogo dublje, jer će možda isto pomoći da čovjek zadrži celinu svoje ličnosti i da pobjegne od tih kriznih stanja. The many whose lives Bratu has touched and changed repeatedly ask one question. How does Bratu himself replenish his own energy? How does he recharge his personal batteries? Where does that endless fountain of energy reside from when he manages to keep on giving to all those in need in search of help? He lifts this, he demonstrates it, and he offers this through the gaze that we can feel whole again and we want to connect with each other. We want each other to be happy. And uh, it seems to wash away a sense of selfishness that we feel generous again. Drosov is a fascinating figure in that he's not making neither religious nor political statements. He's not on the bandwagon. He's not on anybody's bandwagon. In, in fact, if anything, he is communicating through silence and the power of silence. If you meet him in person, you find that it, this is a person with a very clear uh, energy. He just is who he is. He's a, obviously a phenomenon. I think we're at a point in history where people want to believe in the phenomenon in human beings. People have a kind of a hunger for silence. They have a hunger to somehow be in touch with their true self. Amos has a beautiful passage. He says, there's going to be a hunger and a thirst, but not a hunger for bread or a thirst for water, but a hunger for the Word of God. And that Word of God, if you look at 1 Kings 19, is a voice that is silent. God speaks to you through silence, but you have to be willing to listen in silence. Without silence, you're not going to hear it. Maybe he represents that. Some say, how could a mere gaze help? In an age where everything needs to be shown or proven, when doubt is a certainty, and compelling as a certainty, there's a lack of belief that prevents us from simply trusting and believing for the sake of belief. And if one wants to be reminded of how to trust or love this world, look into any child's eyes. You'll find the secret to Brato's gaze. It resides deep within the wonder to which a child sees this world, a wonder we as adults sometimes forget to stop and see all over again, because we should. And if life, when all is said and done, in all its beauty and fury and madness, would it be just a film, we'd have to watch again after we pass on. 
Let's make it the best film we've ever seen. <laughs>